Hello everyone and welcome back to Tomorrow's and Beyond in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. We continue our launches to series because it is a nice window to series and we want to make as much use of it as possible. I've decided to try to launch the series ISRU unit that I had thought about launching in the previous episode on the Kasei rocket. Now I haven't introduced the Kasei rocket in this series so uh, the Kasei rocket is sort of a SLS equivalent except it can launch core only and so it doesn't need boosters. It is Hydrolox Hydrolox, so hydrogen oxygen first stage, hydrogen oxygen second stage, but its engines are very powerful hydrogen oxygen engines and we can see the stats here, 4000 kilonewtons max thrust, uh, 385 second ISP sea low, uh, 434 seconds vacuum, and uh, you can see the mass there, 5.661 and uh, we have the same kind of engine on the upper stage except a vacuum version. So we'll just take a look at that. And so this is to simplify things. Uh, so 4,351 kilonewtons there with the vacuum nozzle and 453 seconds of ISP. I might have to reconsider the dry mass of it given that I've learned a few things since I originally designed it. But it's basically a very large SLS core, especially a very large upper stage. You can see the upper stage is all of this business. So that's huge. And of course, it's got an extremely large engine here compared to the SLS upper stage. And that gives it probably more thrust to weight ratio than we strictly speaking need. What I would like to do is redesign it so that the engines are smaller, uh, maybe more like RS-60H, just more efficient. Um, and then this will be a smaller uh, engine because we don't really need the thrust weight ratio of one up here. Uh, though it's nice to have, we don't really need it. And then we'll probably have seven engines at the bottom or something like that. And that'll be somewhat more efficient. And also I think the dry mass of the tank should be increased. But right now it's okay. It's, it's actually the same diameter of SLS, just taller. And yeah, the upper stage is a full 8.4 meters and longer. So that's how it manages to get about 100 tons, a little bit over 100 tons to orbit even without boosters. You can see without boosters it's 1,444 tons right now. And yeah, let's try it out. Okay, we are still launching from Tampico. Now, previously, in the previous episode, I discovered that the ion engines didn't quite work. And I suspected that that was because we needed solar panels, weird as that sounds. And even though we have a nuclear reactor, we need solar panels. So I've added solar panels to this ISR unit and we're going to test that theory. And if the ion engine still doesn't work, then we know that that theory is wrong, basically. Ignition. We probably shouldn't have the reactor active right away. We would like to have the big radiator on the ISR unit out for that. One other thing we are testing is the ISR unit runs on hydrogen and oxygen as well, and we need it to not boil off. Otherwise, the lander isn't going to be able to land. It won't have any fuel. So that is another thing we're checking. We've got MLI layers on it in theory, and we've got a huge radiator. Mainly that's for when it's drilling. One weird thing about this unit that I'll probably reconsider is that it's RCS's Arizine NTO. Uh, we'll just go to Hydrolox since, well, they're developing that for the Blue Moon lander from Blue Origin anyway, so presumably we'll have an example of that soon. After this, I don't know what I'll send on it, but I want to retest the Mini Star on top of the Orion carrier plane. We had the wrong fuel mixture last time, and I would like to see what its actual capacity to orbit is with the right fuel mixture, so that we can plan ahead for future launches. We want to know how much we can put on it, really. Okay, separation and ignition. Oh, I forgot the separatrons. Oh yeah, we need separatrons on that. Because uh, that interstage can definitely kill this engine otherwise. 
So far so good as far as Delta V is concerned. One consideration of course is that in this version we have residuals and I didn't actually check the capacity of the Kasei rocket with residuals. We only have that number for when it doesn't have residuals, uh, when there isn't a residual issue. So, but so far so good. We will want to dispose of this stage of course, but it could make orbit on its own. We're in a really tight orbit right now, but after we dump this we'll see about the awkward balance of our payload. Nope. Oh, 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 I was too late. Well, it would still be under in the atmosphere on one side, so all right. RCS. We'll coast a bit. We are 26 minutes from our apoapsis right now. Oh well, we might as well try and plot for a series and see. Very far from the stage, though. I guess I'll extend the radiator. <laughs> it's a bit extreme. Uh, but yeah, our solar panels are just these. I don't know if that's going to satisfy the ion engine, but we're only going to find out once we finish the transfer. One nice thing is you can always take a look at your previous transfers out and try to match those. But we seem to be definitely in a different line right now. Well, that's pretty close, but we're, it's costing us a lot more than I expected this time. So we somehow got into a worse inclination. But I guess we'll get to test our ion engines. Okay, well, we have uh, Encounter there. We'll try that out. And, uh, oh, the one reason why we have to take extra is because we haven't actually completed orbit. Well, yeah, we haven't completed orbit yet, so I guess that makes sense. And we'll do this burn before we even reach Apoapsis. Always time warp too quickly, because now I've been playing KSP2, and the time warp steps are different. <laughs> so I press the time warp too much. Actually, yeah, we'll just replot again. We'll go around. We'll have some boil off though. Uh, some is boiling off out of this lander, even with the huge radiator. Look, we've lost some hydrogen and oxygen there. Mm. Let's see, where's the RF boil off? That's a lot of heat penetration, considering we have MLI layers on. Analytic cooling zero. Are you cooling us at all, radiator? Radiator cooling on. Power radiate, 122 kilowatts. 10 kilowatts on the hydrogen, I guess. And then 10 watts on the oxygen, but it seems like the oxygen has lost more. Let me try to top off the lander, but this doesn't look good. Okay, and go. I'll have to watch out for that periapsis there. Oh, oh, why is it? Oh, oh, it's unbalanced, it's unbalanced. Oh no. It's just subtly imbalanced. And this engine doesn't have enough throttling. And the RCS doesn't seem to be used at all for keeping it stable. Why? I can bring it to the node with RCS, but apparently apparently Smart ASS was not going to use RCS for this. Let me try this again. There we go. <laughs> oh, weird. How much actuation are we using? We're not using that much of our authorities to keep this steady. Yes, Smart ASS was just sleeping or something. Yeah, just since I topped it off, one unit of oxygen has gone away. The oxygen boil off is greater than the hydrogen boil off for reasons I can't understand, apparently. Boil off as usual, very troublesome topic. We'll also be capturing with this with the ion unit, but we can't land with that, so... I can't really put a larger radiator on this. 
Uh, okay, as tempting as using the RCS would be. Let's just move on. So that's the ion engine there. Then decoupler. And... Well, we were controlling from that unit. And this will have to be replotted. We want to control from here. And the ion engine is 6,400 right now. The lander has more than 3,000. Yeah, I mean, it would change those numbers somewhat, even at this little thrust. Try SAS on. Time warp. Yeah, it's not working. Well, so our ion engines are just messed up. Once again, we at least tested out the Kasei rocket in here and know its capacity. But this isn't good. I mean, we, we need ion engines to work. We've had the ion engines work, right? Uh, let me just double check that. We have the St. Louis, right? And let's take a look and see that its ion engines are still working. But, I mean, this is the ion unit for Mars. Let's go to the St. Louis and see. And maybe we'll pop back here and see. Maybe it'll be fixed after we go away from it and come back. Okay, here's the St. Louis, and well, right now it's not showing that it has any thrust. It's got those active, but it does say 20 days. So again, this is the ion unit for Mars. Same unit, same thing. In the same way, we have nuclear reactors on here, that on that NTP core. We do have solar panels. That's why I thought that maybe, maybe they, maybe those other solar panels I have don't have this interstellar solar generator thing. Hmm, using the ion engines. And see, it says 219 newtons right now, as horrible as that is. And as I time more, it is bringing the apoapsis down. So, yeah, that's working. So maybe, let me see. Whoa, that's a lot of numbers. I don't get the feeling things are working right with it. <laughs> that's stage time, though. Same unit. Solar panels. It does have the interstellar solar generator. It doesn't have the other thing, the power receiver. But we shouldn't need beamed power receivers for this purpose at all. I don't know. Okay, well, this is a disappointment. But let me uh, test out the payload capacity of the mini star on top of the Orion carrier plane with the fuel rebalance. That's one thing I wanted to do. The next launch is mainly testing out the capacity of Mini Star with the fuel rebalance and seeing how much it can carry with that. I'm guessing about 43 tons, and so that's why I've got this payload at 43 tons. But I also couldn't resist testing out the ion engines again and trying to resolve that issue because they are sort of important to us, even though they're tedious. So I'm going to just cheat this into orbit. I think we've had enough of me getting to orbit and finding out they don't work, right? So for once, especially since these are parts that I modded, so like the reactor and these are modified lackluster labs parts modified by me. So uh, it is generally the case that I do allow myself to cheat parts that I made into orbit. So let's see, uh, just to make sure that they work properly and they clearly have not been working properly. So I will take this leeway. Of course, if it works now and doesn't work later, then I'll be mad. Uh, we probably want some radiators in addition to everything, but I thought maybe if we had these solar panels would be better, because these are basically the ones that are on the ship, the St. Louis. Right, ion engines. Well, it says 35 newtons. Okay, I'll turn off the RCS and during time oh it starts spinning whoops I thought SAS would hold it they definitely seem to have less thrust than in previous versions though they seem to need to warm up for some reason look at that stage time are they only getting power from the solar panels and not the nuclear engine or something and uh, nuclear reactor not the nuclear engine the nuclear engine is totally separate so basically we're getting 20-ish newtons. Hold on. Let's just examine this theory that the reactors are not working. Okay, now it's closer to their full thrust. And that makes sense. Each of them should have 100 kilowatts 
And now each solar panel is providing 42. Okay, well, looks like our nuclear stuff doesn't have any effect. So maybe we shouldn't have this module then, because, well, the whole point of it was to have the nuclear engine, uh, nuclear stuff built in. But for now, for our uh, launch, test launch with the Mini Star, we'll just go ahead and launch with it. The reactors weren't that much extra mass, I don't think. So it should be all right, and we need everything else. We'll just have scaled up solar panels. All right, we are reverting this. All right, so here we go with the launch. Throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. Okay, let's see how we do here. 43 tons is the attempted capacity with, of course, being able to recover the Orion carrier plane and the Mini Star. Somebody asked about max Q, just in case you don't know, you can see the flight data here. You can see the dynamic pressure right there. And what you'll notice is a lot of rockets peak out like between 12 kilometers and 15 kilometers. It depends on their thrust weight ratio. Okay, engines out and turning. I lightened up the mini star just a little bit. So we'll get closer to where we are too, but it's not quite there yet. Uh, it still should be enough for the Orion carry plane like that. Doesn't really need that much. And the less it has, the better it glides too. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, those are. That's not all the engines I want. Um, all right. Yeah. Overall, the Delta V looks okay. Okay, passing by Florida here, and we are about to make orbit. And that's good enough for now. Okay, well, let's separate that off. Okay, so 43 tons to orbit is fine, and we have 400 meters per second left in this, which is definitely enough for it to deorbit. And let's go ahead and try to get this over to Ceres. Though, it's got to take an ion engine burn. The things we do for 5 tons of supplies at series. Okay, we have our encounter there, but we have to do part of this with ion engines, so that's not how that's going to work. <laughs> so, um, it's a matter of which one do we use first, I suppose. I think we should use the ion engines first and circle out. So we probably shouldn't even have plotted it. Uh, they're not producing thrust during time warp right now. Boy, these are giving me trouble. It's, it's, it's got zero thrust. Well, okay, our solar panel is at night. We're in the night time. That's not good. That's the whole reason I put reactors on. Great. Well, we're going to have to use the nuclear engine first, I think. Got to target our mini star just to make sure we don't crash into it at all. Okay, well, that's the nuclear stage. Now for the unfortunately Nuclearless ion engines? The RCS. Okay, they're not working. They just look like they work. They're not actually doing anything. Okay, let's get into daylight. But is this helping at all? Well, I think I now remember why I don't like ion engines. 
It's been a while. I guess I needed a refresher course on this. But uh, yeah, we're, we're not going to get this done very efficiently. Not good for burns out of Earth SOI. Okay, maybe we'll finally break out to interplanetary space here, but it's not going to be good. We don't have enough Delta V left to actually capture around Ceres anyway. Well, well, we almost had something there with the moon. Maybe we should have gone to the moon instead. We would have been able to capture around the moon. This mission doesn't have enough to actually make it make orbit around Ceres, so we are just going to set it aside for now as an interesting test. But once again, the ions have failed me. Uh, well, or I failed the ions. It depends on your point of view. Let's check up on the mini star. We sort of left it in orbit for nine days. Well, it still has 338 meters per second. Obviously, stuff boiled off in nine days. It does have some MLI layers, but not a full load of 100 or anything like that. I think I put 20. Um, and it still has electric charge. It does have a fuel cell, but I didn't activate it. I just didn't keep track of that. Um, we're probably nowhere near in line with the KSC right now, but I guess we could sort of eyeball that. Um, I think we should boost a little bit higher so that we get a consistent one and a half hour orbit. And then we'll work from there. We'll try to bring it down. Um, you know what? We'll start the next episode with that. We'll start the next episode with doing a re-entry test with this. And then we'll proceed from there. The ion engines have taken it out of me. It takes a lot to do that spinny, uppy thing. I think we'll just ban them. Anyway, so next time we'll bring this down and then we'll proceed and maybe we'll think about refitting the Joplin with something a little bit less tedious. And maybe add some extra NTP tanks to the St. Louis so that it can just use its NTP engines. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.